Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A while ago, I did a Luminar 4 video. In that video, I replaced the sky in this image of the tree. And I commented how easy that was to do in Luminar 4. Just a few clicks and I was done. Then I went on to say that I could do that in Photoshop. It just would take me a little longer to do. Well, somebody decided to call me out telling me that there's no way I could do this in Photoshop. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in Photoshop. So I have the image of the tree, and I'm going to replace the sky in that image with the image of these clouds. Now, what we're going to do, step one, is we're going to duplicate the layer of the tree. So I'm going to hit Command-J on my Mac. It's Control-J on your PC. We're going to go over to the clouds. We're going to get the Move tool. The Move tool keyboard shortcut is V is in victory. It's the top tool over here in the tool well. We're just going to click with the left mouse button, drag it up to the tab of the tree, then bring it up over the tree, and then hold the shift key down as I drop it down. That will drop it right in the middle. Now I'm going to roughly position it where I think I might want it. I could reposition it when I'm uh, in, you know, down the line, but I'm going to put it right about here. And then I'm going to go over to the Layers panel. I'm going to drag the layer of clouds below the layer that we duplicated of the tree. Then I'm going to click on the tree layer to make it active. Now what we need to do is get a selection of that tree. To do that, we're going to go over to channels. And you can see we have RGB, then we have the red, green, and blue channels. What we're going to do is we're going to click on each of the channels, red, green, and blue, in turn, and look for the most contrast between the tree branches and leaves and the sky. So which channel has the most contrast between the branches, leaves, and sky? So there's red, there's green, and there's blue. Now it's pretty obvious the blue channel has the most contrast between the leaves and the sky. Now we need to duplicate the blue channel. To duplicate a channel, just click on it and drag it down to the very bottom where that little plus sign is. So now we have a duplicate copy of the blue channel. Now we need to increase this contrast even more. To do that, we're going to add a levels control to this blue copy channel. Now you don't want to add a levels adjustment layer. Don't do that. We're going to add a levels control directly to the blue channel. You could hit Command or Control L, or you could go up to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take these three sliders and move them around to uh, try to increase the contrast. So I'm going to move this one this way to make the tree darker, and I'll move this one this way to make the sky brighter. So we're increasing that contrast. And that looks pretty good right there. And we're going to click OK. You know what? It doesn't look good. Let me go up a little more. Now that looks pretty good right there. We're going to click OK. All right, so we have this highly contrasty blue copy channel. Now we need to get a selection. To get a selection of all the bright areas in this channel, just hold the Command or Control key in while you click on the channel, and you'll get a selection of all the highlights. Now we're going to turn everything back on by going up to the RGB channel and clicking on the little eyeball. Then we're going to hop over to Layers. So you can see how our selection persists after doing all that. Now we have a selection of the highlights. Now I need to reverse this and we really want a selection of the midtones and shadows. So to do that, uh, just hit Shift Command I on a Mac, Shift Control I on a PC to invert the selection. Now go down to the very bottom and we're going to add a mask to this. Just click on the mask and you can see that we replace the sky. Now it isn't perfect yet. You can see how the sky is encroaching down here on the little hill in the background and the water. So what we need to do now is make sure we're clicked on the mask. We're going to get a brush. Hit the B key on your keyboard to get a brush. It's over here on the tool well. And we need to paint in white wherever we don't want the sky. We don't want the sky in the water. So I'm painting in white. You can see the little swatches here. The foreground color is white. And we'll go down here and we'll just paint away where I don't want it. I'm gonna and make sure you're using a, probably a fairly hard brush uh, for this because so, you want a, a good edge right there. And we'll come in here. 
Just do a very quick job. Okay, now if I want to look at the mask to make sure I'm not missing any uh, parts where I painted, hold the Alt or Option key, Alt if you have PC Option, if you have Mac, and click right on the mask. Now we got to look at the mask. Now you can see that I'm missing a lot down here, but the sky isn't down there. I pushed the sky up. But if you feel better about painting white down there, you could do it because you're going to move, you might move that mask or you might move the sky around to readjust it. And you want to make sure that you're just not going to have it show where it shouldn't show. All right. Hold the Alter Option key in again and click on that mask again. Now, if we want to move that sky, readjust it, click on the sky image, get the move tool. V is the keyboard shortcut. Now you can move it around, try to adjust it like you like. And looks pretty good uh, right here. Now, maybe a couple little minor issues. If you look right here, it looks like there's some branches just hanging off in space. My selection kind of wiped out the little branch there. So what we could do is make sure you're on the layer, clicked on the layer of the tree, get the eraser tool, hit the E key on your keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut for the eraser. And then you could come in and erase any little branches that might be hanging off in space that you think don't look right. And that's all there was. So that looks pretty good. Technically, I'm done, but I'm going to show you some more things because now and then when you do this type of channel selection to do uh, this masking, you'll get some haloing and you, it's going to be white haloing. And I'm going to show you what you could do to reduce and really eliminate that white haloing. Now, again, I don't have that issue with this image. I'm done technically, but to take care of the haloing, what you need to do is get your selection back. To do that, um, go over the, uh, the uh, mask itself, hold the command key in, and click on the mask so we have a selection again. Now, go over to the image itself. Make sure you clicked on the image. Now, it selected the highlights of the mask, which is the white areas, and the white areas are the parts we're concerned about. So we do not have to invert this mask. So we're clicked on the image itself, hit Command J. Now what we just did is we just duplicated that, uh, that layer up top. So we just have that duplicated. Now what you could do is with that selected, go up to Layer, Matting, Defringe. And you're going to want to do one or two pixels. I'll just do one pixel and you could watch the tree branches when I do it. See how they darken? Got rid of any matting that happens to be there. So that may help you if you have any little white haloing around the image. Now you also could do one more thing. Again, with that uh, layer three in this case selected, go up to layer, matting, remove white mat. And you could see it made it even darker in this case. So those are a couple things you could do to get rid of any white haloing you may have. But there, I showed, as in I wasn't lying in that Luminar video, I could do this in Photoshop. It just took me longer. In Luminar, it was a few clicks and it was done. In Photoshop, it just takes a little more work, but you could do it. So that's it. I hope this taught you something you didn't know. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>